Welcome one and all to your favorite IT Late Show. After all the seasonal holiday stuff is over, back in the office with our lovely Octane. What I really like so far on my YouTube channel is that we get really helpful comments. For example, the SSH server was not working on the Octane and someone, I guess from Gentoo, commented here SSH problem may be this Gentoo bug and it indeed looks similar also with MIPS N32 and potentially also affecting PowerPC and such. Usually with bugs like this I expect some cross-compile issue or GCC miscompilation bug, things like this, but it appears to be maybe an OpenSSL real crypto logic bug here that this ECM something, where was it? ECDSA code is not really prepared for all kind of integer size combinations. So with all this kind of things we always have plenty of things to test and tinker and fix and such. And besides fixing the code for real, they suggest to disable here some optimization options, some long, what was it, configure. So here's some issue probably with size of underscore underscore uint 128 underscore t or so. And apparently this also causes problems on maybe PowerPC and S390X and such. So configure option, there is something here with long whatsoever, wherever that was. Disable maybe 64-bit code, commit message here, disable 128-bit math logic for now. Let's see what, this is also, oh, it's not a patch, disable FIPS, what is this here, disable it for now. Here is our here, see if your Twitch and supports, if so it's 64-bit friendly for this probably NIST P64 GCC. So enable here is something EC NIST 64, I guess. So I will shortly figure out how to most minimally do this here and then cross compile and test it. So unfortunately it looks, maybe it's not the same bug because this looks disabled here. Configure for Linux generic 32 with no EC NIST P64 GCC 128. So Unfortunately, maybe not, then probably let's boot the Octane up and shortly take a look what exactly the SSH server is doing there. Maybe we can get a quick clue looking on some SSHD verbose connection thing for some debug nodes. But this just reminds me why we do these videos here, because often people think everything just works by itself and if you want to fix something it only takes five minutes. You see even when you think someone tells you yeah, it's maybe the same bug, then it isn't. I didn't I don't have host keys on this one, so probably delete it for dumping this system image the other month. Connection closed here, yeah, that's probably that, which I repeated we had 134. So, what's this V? So what is this negotiating here? How verbose can we go? Uh, as I thought, this may not necessarily be so super easy to debug. I wonder if this is some privilege separation issue. Hmm. I wonder, is this normal address family not supported by protocol? But, hmm. Here, if you have other ideas to that, let me know. Run with asterisk there, so... Wondering if this operations permitted stuff there is normal. Hmm. Often always helpful to compare what we get on a working machine. 
for the same stuff so as trace follow all child forks user as bin this is hd and then localhost okay host change but known hosts So this works here, the question is now will we find something in here, maybe output to a log file, and that was change group or something, what did we get there, no, we scrolled this away already, and the second was the sec on filter here is some filter something maybe it is this host key types but here we get a zero how many set comps do we have set comp only this so let's try once more maybe that is on the problem s trace wait a second maybe we don't need s trace Oh no, we need a stress. So we have, we need to connect. So connect. And here we get all this stuff scrolling by on this not so fastest frame buffer and second kill here, right? Okay, this works. The second one here is but maybe anyway this is a problem this is by the way exactly before this we get probably from the child I guess set GID and stuff operation not permitted let's see second and here we get actually we also get here some operation not permitted interesting the more you know of the stuff, doing stuff. So, I wonder if for a test we can disable this SecComp security stuff. That would be build open SSH. Yeah, and again, if you're not the developer of this and have written all the code yourself, it's always getting used to this, taking a look what exactly happens, analyzing and stuff. So, let's see if this has something to sec comp disable this for test sec comp yeah because here's some sandbox sec comp stuff and configure so not supported do we get here somewhere configure help sandbox style no let's try this for a test just that we know what is the issue of course you would not run this on a production server like this so conf opts just add this here for a test so that cross compiled of course it's just a matter of seconds or so, or a minute. Then port forward this, and then secure copy, open SSH, then mine install. Then start it. And let's see if something happens now. When we try... Oh, look, this works. So this is some SecComp sandbox filter stuff. Yeah, this, of course, we would eventually also need to investigate in all detail. Let's run this without all this verbose stuff. No. This debug stuff only runs this here once, so... Let's see if we can fully log in. Oh, we have 
probably not a, a new account maybe on there. Then we need to allow here root login in sshd root permit root login yes for a test. And I guess we are on the speed racer. So seccomp that is then. And that would be SSH. Ah, did I delete this? Box, second filter. So the question is, what kind of uh, it's maybe the system calls here that maybe different for N32 or something? Yeah. So this saga continues. I hope you saw something new and learned something. And don't forget to subscribe for all the future episodes, including, of course, PS3 RSX ASAP. And I hope to see you soon.